All right, everyone, we're going to get right into our first component, which is my absolute favorite, and that is aerobic endurance, or as others have called it, cardiovascular endurance. Uh, you'll notice that the quote at the bottom, that's just a play on one of William Shakespeare's famous plays called Romeo and Juliet. You might have heard it, and we all know that after you do any kind of cardio, you don't smell that great. So, I call it aerobic endurance, but some people call it cardiovascular endurance. What is the difference between the two? Actually, absolutely nothing except for the names. They are the same exact thing. So we're going to go over what each of those terms means. So we have the term aerobic, which simply means with oxygen. So you are performing an activity or an exercise that is increasing how hard you're breathing, how much oxygen you're intaking into your body. Then we have the term cardio. Cardio simply means heart. Your heart is pumping faster, it's working harder. Vascular means lungs. As you're increasing your oxygen intake, it means that your lungs are expanding and contracting to get that oxygen to where it needs to go. And then we have the word endurance, and that simply means over a long period of time. So here's what happens. Let's say you decide that today is a beautiful day, we just got a couple of inches of snow, that you're going to go out and do some cross-country skiing, which is by far the best low-impact aerobic endurance sport you could possibly get into. I myself am not a skier. There's a tree out there with my name on it, but hey, if you do it, awesome for you. So you're out on the trail. You've got your skis on. You're going through the hills, and you notice that your intake and your oxygen has increased, okay? So your oxygen goes to your lungs, and when it arrives there, it pretty much calls an Uber, and it's calling the heart where the heart is pumping furiously to send the blood, which is your Uber ride, to the lungs to go and pick up the oxygen from there. From there, the blood travels through your body and delivers the oxygen to the muscles that you're using. So let's talk about some examples of cardiovascular exercise. So I just gave you the cross-country skiing one. That's one of the more complex cardiovascular exercises that you can do, but there are some simple ones such as walking, running, jogging, hiking, swimming, and dancing. And fun fact, I actually cannot stand this Fortnite dance. It hurts my knees just looking at it. So let's get into endurance. Now, I say over a long period of time, but how long should I really exercise for? Well, for middle school students, it's recommended that you have some sort of aerobic exercise for at least an hour a day, three times a week. But don't get nervous. You don't have to do that hour all at once. You can chunk it. You can do like a 20-minute walk in the morning and then decide to go for a 20-minute run in the afternoon. And hey, maybe you have dance practice later that night, so you're getting in your other 20 minutes. So as long as you're getting an hour in at least three times a week, you're actually on a good path. So let's talk about what aerobic endurance is not. So even though I said that aerobic endurance increases your oxygen, your heart's pumping faster, your lungs are pumping faster. If you take a look at the GIF on the side, the third runner from the left is Usain Bolt, who is the fastest man on the planet. And yes, he is breathing hard, his heart is going to be working, and that oxygen is getting to his leg muscles as fast as he possibly can. Sprinting is actually considered an anaerobic sport. And if aerobic means with oxygen, anaerobic simply means without oxygen. And no, he's not holding his breath throughout this entire race. Anaerobic is a way of saying that you are doing an activity in short bursts. So he's only running 100 meters, which is the straight part of a track, and he's going as fast as he possibly can. And he is the world record holder, and he can do this in 9.58 seconds. Now, while that's impressive, that would be like you running from your front door to go and catch the bus in 9.58 seconds and saying, oh, I did my exercise for the week. I got my cardio in. I'm done. That's not going to work out well for you if you do that. So we're going to look at what endurance actually is, and that's 
a marathon runner. So this is my idol. This is Mo Farah. He is a multi-medal winner in all kinds of distance running races. So he just completed the 2018 Chicago Marathon, which is 26.2 miles. And he finished it in two hours, five minutes, and 11 seconds, which is amazing. That means every mile that he ran was just over four minutes. So to be able to run 26.2 miles and every mile being just over four minutes, that is incredibly impressive. And the true example of what an endurance runner is. So in this module, you are going to have to run 26.2 miles in two hours, five minutes, and 11 seconds. I'm kidding. You don't have to. But what we are going to do is we are going to look at some of the different ways that you can get your aerobic endurance in. And we're going to be exploring some use of technology such as fitness trackers. So you should have a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or a pedometer or a movable band. And if these things are connected to a fitness app, we're going to take a look at those as well and how to use those and how we're going to keep track of our movements of the day. Uh, we're also going to be discussing aerobic versus anaerobic preferences. What types of exercises or activities that are aerobic or anaerobic that we enjoy? All right, so let's get started. <laughs> 